Good morning and good Chodesh. Today is the 30th day of Sivan. It is Thursday and it is uh, the first day of Reish Chodesh Tamas. And we today include the uh, chapter 9 in Shar Hayichud Vayamunah. Now, in general, this part of the Tanya, the Shar Hayichud Vayamunah, the gates of unity and the faith of the Rebbe, is here to guide us and teach us what it means when we say Shema Israel, as we just said, Hashem Alekeinu Hashem Echad, God is one. What does it mean that God is one? The oneness of God is a, is a mitzvah, an important, very important aspect in, in Judaism is to believe and understand the oneness of Hashem. And there is, in the first seven chapters of this part of the Tanya, al Rebbe explained the concept that the Hashem is one, meaning that there's nothing else, everything in the world is as a result of Hashem's making it. And Hashem is there in every aspect. And there is nothing, nothing exists independent of God. That's one aspect. And we spoke about it in length in the previous chapters. And the second aspect of this is the belief that not only there's nothing else outside of Hashem, but also the, the, the oneness of Hashem is a oneness that is a unique oneness. It is a, it is a oneness, a true oneness, meaning that it's not a oneness that is a composition of different things. Meaning by, by a person, when you have, there is the person and there is the additional things that the person has, is wise, is kind, all of this add something to him. By Hashem, God is one with everything. And, that, and he concluded by saying that this is really something that is not, and it's not something we can understand. He quoted from the Rambam, the Maimonides, that explains that this thing is a person, a human being is cannot comprehend it because we think in, in, uh, in human terms. And, but this is the, the point of the Muna, the faith to, to reach to that level, to understand this, what we don't understand. And now, in today's share, the Alter Rebbe starts with a footnote explaining a little bit of the concept of the Tzimtzumim, the contractions, what it, how we came down from the Hashem, the infinite God, in no, all the way till the Tzimtzumim should be contracted to the point to create this physical world. So he, yesterday we explained, he said that this is something for the, for the Kabbalistic people to understand, but here he comes and brings a little bit, a short, a brief description of this concept of the Tzimtzumim. And it concludes also by explaining how all of this, although this is something that is for the scholars, it's for the, for the, for the Kabbalists, it's not for us. But what is the point of the Hasidus? What is the point of teaching us? Is the emuna that Hashem is here and everything is part of Hashem. So let's see inside. In today's Shir, in the middle of chapter 9, in Shari Yichud Vemunah. Says the Alter Rebbe. Sorry that Simtsum Be'oyr Ein Saif Baruch Hu. This note will outline the mystical principle of the Simtsum of the Ein Saif Light. Again, the Simtsum means the contraction. You see, before the Simtsum, God's infinite manifestation was predominant. Simpson caused his capacity for limitation and finitude, which previously had been submerged within his infinite power to be revealed. So you have, what God ever says here, there is, I mean, we're going to say it, um, outside, and then we're going to look at the words of the Alter Rebbe. 
And generally it says that there is general three types of tzimtzumim, three levels in the tzimtzum. There was the, as the Arizal explained, there was in, in the beginning, there was the light, the or Ein Sof, the light of Ein Sof, filling everything, there's nothing else. Then he says there was sort of a removal of the light. Again, we're not going to go into it, what, what that means. We spoke about it in length in a previous lesson. The removal of the light doesn't mean literally, it means in our perspective. But in any case, there was a removal of the light of Hashem and allowing a, like a void and then bringing down a very, uh, it's called a kav, a line of light, which is a more reduced light. And that is called Adam Kadmain. What is Adam Kadmain? Adam Kadmain means, literally means the, 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 the Adam means man, but it, the, the, uh, the primal man, the, the original man, so to speak. What does that mean? Uh, it was talking about, there was the, the image, the spiritual image of, of, of man. Man is in the image of God. But it is the spiritual image that emerged after the first symptom. And that image means it's that in potential, it could have, after many other contractions, to bring out the different types of uh, different types of attributes. What, what uh, man is composed of is the intellect, the emotions. So all of this is the Adam Kadman is created there, meaning an potential to have this light. If you want to give just a little example, you can use the example of a seed. A seed that you plant in the ground and a tree grows. So in the seed, you already have in potential the tree. But if you open, if you crack open the seed, you're not going to see a tree. But there is potential to grow something. So the image after the first contraction in the light of Hashem, and it was the void of Hashem's infinite light, and all of this is relatively speaking, we have the image of the Adam Kadman. And then there was a symptom, that was the first symptom. And then after this, there was a second symptom, and that is symptom in Adam Kadman itself. In the in that level of Adam Kadman, there was the symptom, another contraction, and that created allowed the creation of the Kesser, the crown, which is meaning in there you already have a more, it's not just in potential, but it is there already the attributes, but not again, not in a revealed way. And finally, the third level of the symptom, you could call it the soida dikna, the esoteric doctrine of dikna. Dikna means a beard. Is the symptom of a beard represented the concept of hair in, uh, uh, in general? What is, what is the hair? Hair is, is, are, has energy, has life to it. I mean, obviously it has the life because you know you see it grows. So, so there is life. However, the life is so reduced in such a, uh, in, in a very, in, to the point that uh, when you cut the hair, you don't, you don't feel the pain. So the cause of the, 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 the esoteric doctrine of the symptom of the dikna of the hair, and uh, specifically it talks about the hair of the beard because there is some hair that represents negative things, but your hair on the head is, not a good thing to have too much hair, and then the beard is a represent the holiness. But we're not going to go into this details. But in general, this is the three symptoms that he has after. So there is the light of Hashem, which is the endless light that fills everything. There was the symptom that which we were, which was like a removal of that light. Then there was the symptom in Adam Kadman in after you have the the light that was came in a potential image of Adam with, with the potentially having the, the, um, the different attributes. 
And then you have the dikna. The dikna represents a, a further contraction to the point that what came out, which is basically the world of Atsilas, which was after uh, there we have already the different spheres, the different attributes. So in general, those are the three tzimtzumim that allows the endless light of Hashem to come and to be contracted, contracted to the point that, that this world is being, being able to emanate from Hashem in, in a form with that, it, that is divided to different attributes and so on. This is only after all of these tzimtzumim. So again, let's look inside. Says the Alterim. Say that tzimtzum be'oirein seif baruchu. This note will outline the mystical principle of the tzimtzum of the ends of light. The tzimtzum adam kadman and the tzimtzum of adam kadman, which is the highest state of existence after the tzimtzum. After the tzimtzum and the primal thought that contains and is the source of all subsequent emanation and creations, that is called the Adam Kadman. Then, then there is a third level of tzimtzum that he calls the Soida Dikna, and the esoteric doctrine of tzimtzum of Dikna. Dikna means the beard in Aramaic. So, she said, call at Simtsumi, let Tamsema Oyo, she is lavish be prinis hailing the youth spheres. This is for the underlying purpose of all the contractions, is to condense the light in order to enable to become enclosed within the vessels of the ten spheres, the world of Atsilus. The world of Atsilas, which is the highest spiritual world. After all of these Timsumim. So there was these Timsumim before Atsilas. In the world of Atsilas, you have already the division of the point and its different attributes. There's Chachma, there's Bina, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and then the emotions. So all of this, the Timsumim. And when, when we're saying there are three tzimtzumim, they're generally speaking, but they're much more than that when you go in details. Generally speaking, those are the three tzimtzumim. And all of this is in order to be able to bring about the ability that the light should be able to vest and clothe itself in the vessels of the ten attributes, the ten spheres. It is only after the Ein Soif light becomes clothed within the vessels of Chabad, the Maimonides statement about the Holy One, blessed be He. Is in place. What is the statement? As he said, he is the knower, he is the knowledge, and he is known. And by knowing himself, he knows all creation. So, what, what is this statement saying? So the, this statement we mentioned in the previous lessons, and we explained, and uh, we said about the, that there was others that challenged the, the Maimonides. It says, how could you say about God, how could you attribute to God anything like knowledge, knowing, knowing, he's above all of this. When you're saying he's the knowledge, you're like limiting God to, to the concept of knowledge. And indeed they said, the, uh, Hashem, you call him HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be he. And what does it mean? Holy, holy means separated, elevated, aloof, above everything. So that's they 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 uh, had an issue with the statement of the Rambam. But here the Alter Rebbe explains that all depends what level of godliness we're talking about. If we're talking about Hashem Himself, God Himself above these Timtumim, of course we cannot say those things. We cannot attribute to God these. 
uh, idols of his uh, knowledge and so on. But here what, what the Rambam says, he's talking about after the Tzimtzumim, after all the, these contractions that we explain now, when Hashem lowered and reduced his light into point and to be vested and clothed into Adam Kadma in the image of Adam and so on and so forth and the different Tzimtzumim all the way to it comes to Atzilus where he is already vested in the different attributes. There we say that regardless to the fact that he, he em, there was a, emanated from himself these attributes of, of, of intellect and emotions and so on, nevertheless, he is one with them. He's not separated. So this is what Dr. explains. And he goes on and says, Lafi shebechines keilim de'atzilus nasim nechtrama v'chayus libriya yetzira asiyah olochola shabahem. He said, for the vessels of Attilus, they become the soul and life force of the world of Beria, Yetzirah, and Asiya, and all the creatures therein. So, so they, this is ex explains what the Rambam says, that by knowing them, by knowing himself, he knows them, because they themselves become the source for the, the world and 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 uh, the creation that comes below them, as we said, it is the different levels: the world of Atzilus, Briya, Tzirunsiya, and so on. Avol, however, bleed simtsum v'al basha nizke le'el loishayech klal loima hu ayideya vehu amado vechulu. Says, however, without the aforesaid simtsum and investiture of the light in the vessels, it is not at all appropriate to say that he's the knower, he's the knowledge, meaning the whole category of knowledge cannot be ascribed to God, even in so exalted a manner as in the statement that he's the knower and so on. So, so that's what Al that's what Altab explains. With for the symptom, those who challenge the Rambam were right. You cannot say this about God. Why? For he is not within the realm and domain of knowing and knowledge at all, God forbid. But he's infinitely elevated above even the level and the bounds of wisdom. Wisdom is the highest level. So, so the, even the wisdom compared to Hashem is considered like the lowest level. So the extent that the realm, that in relation to him, the level of wisdom is considered like the level of physical action. That's, and there's no difference. So this is the end of the note that al Rebbe said, just in a note, explaining a little bit the Kabbalistic concept of the Tzimtzum. And al Rebbe goes on to say, Now we are not concerned with, with esoteric matters. All of these emanations, this is not what we're concerned about. What are we concerned about? In other words, the Hasidus here is not a, something that comes to explain Kabbalah. Hasidus has a different mission. It's a different dimension of the Torah to bring down godliness here in this world. You know, the Kabbalah explains godliness in, in the higher worlds. Hasidus is bringing, explaining godliness here, down here, how Hashem is here. So what is it? But it is incumbent upon us to believe with complete faith matters that are revealed to us that he and his attributes meaning the vessels and sephiris are one. The Hain, which means Midais of Shalakadish Bohu. Now, 
meaning the attributes of the Holy One, blessed be He, and His will, and His wisdom, and understanding, and knowledge are one with His essence and being. Who alone is exalted by infinite elevations above the levels of wisdom and intellect and comprehension. And therefore, Hence, it says, since he totally transcends intellect and comprehension, so his union with the attributes which he emanated from himself is also beyond the realm of comprehension. We cannot understand that. But we know that this is it. Meaning, it is impossible to understand how, how he unites with them. Rather, this may be apprehended only through faith. This is where the faith comes in. In the Holy Zaya, therefore, the attributes of the Holy One, blessed be He, which are the sephiris that are called the secret of faith, which is the faith that transcends intellect. Now, this concept cannot be grasped intellectually, but only through faith. So what is, what is the bottom line from today's lesson? is that on the one end, we explain the idea that the world is nothing, that the world is completely non-existent, meaning it's only existing by Hashem's existence, and nothing is independently existing. On the other end, we're saying that Hashem is one with everything. In a way, it can be Explained the difference between, it says, when we do a mitzvah uh, or when we do our own things, mundane things, for the sake of Hashem. Because it says, Kol secha, everything what you do in life, you do for the sake of God. So when you eat, when you drink, when you work, whatever, it's, it's all for the sake of Hashem. So when we are doing things for the sake of God, what are we saying? We are saying that the world really doesn't exist. What exists is God. For example, when we, you take a walk in the street. When you take a walk in the street, you can say, what are you doing? I'm taking a walk. But if, you, but if, you think, but if you're going to shul, let's say, you're still walking in the street, well, what are you doing? You're going to shul. The walk is not is not significant. It's not important. They're, they're walking. You're doing the same thing as walking as the other guy who is walking the street. But you're going to shul. You're going to do a mitzvah. So whatever you do, you do for Hashem. So the world is just being used as a, uh, as a tool to get to get to the, the real thing. What is the real thing? Is God. This is when you're doing mundane things for the sake of Hashem. However, when you do a mitzvah, you go to the next level. You do a mitzvah, you're taking in a physical object and you're elevating that object itself, you're putting on tefillin. You, the, so the tefillin is not just that you're doing, you need to be connected to Hashem. In order to, to be connected, you have to use some skin of a cow. No, the skin of the cow, that is, become holy itself. Take the feeling, the feeling, you kiss the feeling, you don't throw, you don't put it in a, you treat it with much respect. So this is bringing Hashem into this world, unifying Hashem with this world. This is the end of chapter nine. Thank you so much for joining. I'm sure there's some questions here today. Any, anyone can, if you have any questions. We can discuss them now. Rabbi.